Howdy, howdy, Chris here, and today on Garage Noise, we'll be painting this Chevy truck bedside. I'll walk you through all the steps it takes to paint and clear your bedside. We'll be dealing with some extreme heat today, so I'll share with you some tips and tricks on how to overcome that. Now, previously, we'd straightened the dent, blocked it out, and got it ready for paint. So let's get right into it. The next step in this process is we need to clean this bedside. So for that, we're going to use some isopropyl alcohol. We'll wash it down, remove any contaminants that are on the surface of this paint. You could also use a wax and grease remover or some kind of water-based cleaner. And then we'll go ahead and mask it off, and we'll get right into the painting. Darius will mask this off while we go ahead and mix up our color blender or wet bed before we paint. Okay, we're just gonna mix up some color blender here. I say mix it up, but it's ready to spray, actually. So this is a product we're using here, the Speedcoat uh, Color Blender. This is ready to spray, but it's a little bit of a thicker product, so we're gonna reduce it 10%. I'm using the 3M PPS cup today because and this is a Series 2 because we're going to be using the 3M Performance gun. I don't get to use this gun enough, and I really, I really love that gun. It sprays really well, but I'll show you how it sprays here today. So Color Blender, or some call it a wet bed, is basically just straight binder. What binder is, is binder is what's added to your paint pigments, so those colors mix together and bind together. So when you have just straight binder, it's clear. There's no pigments in it, and we're going to spray that over the panel before we apply our base color. And what that's going to do, it's going to give the paint a good surface and the metallics a good surface to land in so they can land into something wet. They can lay down flat so they're nice and uniform. It's very important in hot weather when you're spraying some fine metallics or any metallics. And it's very hot today. It's over... 115 degrees in the shop here today. I always use a wet bed or a color blender when I'm spraying in these kinds of temperatures, especially with metallics. Go ahead and apply our wet bed to this bedside. Now, so basically what a wet bed is, some people call it a color blender, some people call it a clear base coat, others call it a wet bed. But what it's gonna do is it's gonna create a barrier between the surface and the new paint very helpful in hot temperatures and with high metallic finishes to eliminate modeling. Give your metallics something wet to land in so they lay flat and uniform so you have no modeling and you have a nice uniform blend when you paint. So we're going to cover this entire bedside with the color blender. Uh, we are using the 3M Performance Gun. I've got the air pressure set. The air pressure set at about 13 PSI. Our fluid volume is two and a half turns out from closed. So we closed it all the way, then we turned it two and a half turns out. I opened the fan pattern up all the way. This gun has a particularly, a really wide fan pattern. So I opened it up all the way and then I backed it up one full turn. And there's the fan pattern. So I'm gonna blow some air on this and tack rag it off. This is just a sticky cloth that's gonna pick up any dust particles that may have landed on this surface since we washed it. All right, so we're gonna apply this just like base. We'll have a consistent distance and a consistent speed, about four to five inches away is the way I like to spray. Um, I'll put a medium to wet coat on, overlapping 70 to 80%. Okay, I've mixed up our nascent base. This mixes up two to one. It's nascent XL, has great coverage. We're gonna cover the primer area first. We're not gonna be concerned about our blend until the second and third coat. We'll let that flash off and we'll put a second coat on. One more coat of base on. I'm gonna tack rag it off first.
Here I'm putting the final coat of base on and some call it a drop coat. I'm just moving a little bit farther away from the panel. I'm not putting it on as heavy and I'm blending it out into the rest of the panel. I'm making sure I have good overlap so we have really consistent metallics. And basically you wanna have your base coat to be as smooth as possible and the blend to be as smooth as possible. And then here I'm just taking my Astro Sunlight. These are handy to have to check your coverage. Oh, I'm looking good. inside the wheel opening and making sure everything's covered. We don't have any transparent areas. Okay, we're gonna start applying our clear coat. We've got the fan pattern wide open. We've got the fluid volume wide open. Now the way you do that is without the cup on there, you pull the trigger, you open the fluid volume all the way open, pull the trigger, and then you tighten down the fluid volume till you feel pressure on the trigger. Now you're wide open. I'm gonna spray it at 20 PSI. Ooh, I'm gonna back it off a little bit, maybe 19 or 18. there so a couple things when you're spraying in hot temperatures uh, the reason it's very difficult to spray in these kinds of temperatures even with your base coat is things like to start drying immediately as, as soon as they hit the panel and if it's hot enough out they'll start drying before they hit the panel so some of these metallics and some of these uh, base coats um, if you start getting it it'll start to get really dry if you're spraying in hot temperatures now one thing to combat that it would be to use the proper reducer for the temperature you're spraying in and the slowest reducer possible is what you're going to want to use in these really hot temperatures so i'm using slow reducer and slow activator i could have used some extra slow if i if i would have had extra slow on hand i would have definitely used it because in these temperatures over 100 degrees you want it to dry as slow as possible. So I'm having a little bit difficulty. The base coat wasn't too bad. It was a little bit powdery, what I call powdery, but it laid down wet enough and smooth enough that we got a good transition in our metallics. Now the clear coat's a little bit more difficult to get a super flat finish in these hot temperatures. But like I said, use the right temperature activator. I'm using a slow, extra slow would have been better. Now, the other thing I'm doing is I'm spraying a little bit closer to the panel. I'm getting more material on the panel. I'm spraying a little bit slower um, so I can get it on wet. And I'm putting my first coat on wet as well. Now, I've already determined that I'm probably going to have to wet sand and buff this after I'm done. It's just, it's just how it is in these temperatures. Everything doesn't always go perfectly. If it was perfect, I would be spraying in 70 degrees all the time. That would be perfect. <laughs> but when it's over 100 degrees, you have to make concessions. And one of those is you can always wet sand and buff it. So typically when you're spraying a clear coat, there's a certain amount that the clear flows out. So when you put it on the surface, a few minutes later, it'll start to flow out and it starts to level out a certain amount. Different clears, clears are different, you know, depending on the clear you're using. Um, but with it being so hot, it's not giving it that time to flow out so you get that nice flat finish or, you know, the nice OEM texture. It might be hard to tell, but I'm moving really slow and I'm really fighting to get that clear coat finish that I'm looking for. Just see how hot it is, how hot this panel is right now. 112 degrees. If I go up to the roof, oof. 140, wow, 147 degrees on that metal roof. So you can imagine it's making it pretty hot in here. These are difficult situations to paint in for sure. But the work must continue, so we'll finish this thing up. We'll do a little bit of wet sanding on it. And overall, it looks pretty decent. It's just got a little bit more texture than I like and a few little particles of dust. So we'll buff those out and get this ready for the customer. I'm pretty happy with the clear coat. It's not quite as flat I as I would like it, but it has pretty much a factory peel to it. We'll go through and we'll uh, denib the dirt. There's a real simple way to correct your clear coat from orange peel or dust. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how. Listen, I appreciate each and every one of you watching. We'll see you next time on Garage Noise.